Now, where will they intersect tomorrow? If OnStar and telematics are connecting cars to the outside world, then one of the next big developments in automotive electronics is connecting cars with other cars. Connecting them electronically, that is, to keep them from connecting physically. In recent years, advances in electronics have allowed for technologies like anti-lock brakes, traction control, electronic stability control, and obstacle detection. At GM, we're working our way up this advanced technology ladder to help our drivers avoid accidents and improve traffic flow. In fact, we're now offering lane departure warning system and a blind spot alert system on the 2008 Buick Concern and 2008 Cadillac STS and DTS. We're preparing to take it even further through the use of GPS and advanced transponder technology that we believe will revolutionize the driving experience. We call it V2V, or vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. Vehicle to me starts with the collision avoidance and builds from there. The key difference between V2V and the sensor-based vision system is in the electronic communications. Today's vision system send out a signal that determines the speed and location of the vehicle ahead of you and directs your car accordingly. It's excellent technology. But these next generation systems promise to be even better because they'll be significantly less costly for sure, but more importantly, because they'll use the transponders to talk with other vehicles within a quarter mile of your vehicle. So if six cars ahead, somebody in a transponder equipped vehicle steps on the brakes in your lane or the lanes to either side of you, your transponder will immediately know that and start slowing down your car even before you're aware that you need to stop. This type of technology, which was really unheard of 15 years ago, has the potential to minimize traffic jams and, more importantly, greatly reduce highway accidents and fatalities with minimal and possibly even no roadway infrastructure required. And it's progressive. This past November, for example, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, sponsored a contest for, quote, sophisticated autonomous vehicles. Translation, they held a race for robot cars. Well, 37 years ago, GM built the Lunar Rover for the Apollo Space, Pro Space Program. Why not try to do something a little more down to Earth? And so we teamed up with Carnegie Mellon University, Caterpillar, Continental, and others to outfit and race what has to be the most tricked out Chevy Tahoe this side of, well, this side of the moon. The Carnegie Mellon team named the Tahoe Boss after Charles Boss Kettering, the first head of GM's research division, who, by the way, personally invented the electric self-starter that I spoke of earlier. Let's see how the modern-day boss made out. General Motors teamed with Carnegie Mellon University, uh, Continental, and Caterpillar to develop BOSS. Uh, we actually used it to compete in the DARPA Urban Challenge that took place in early November in Victorville, California. I'm really proud to tell you that we won that race. These cars drive themselves, totally autonomous, no remote control, nobody in the vehicle. It's almost as if the ghost is turning the steering wheel, and it is remarkable. The DARPA challenge involved 60 miles of driving, and you had to do it in less than six hours. And it was in a mock urban environment. We had to obey all of the driving laws in California. We had to stop at stop signs, we had to yield, we had to merge, we had to interact with other vehicles. In fact, there were 21 real cars on the road with stunt drivers mixing with the 11 autonomously driven vehicles in the competition. But the urban challenge was about taking electronic sensors, electronic algorithms, software algorithms, and actually being able to get a 360 degree look at everything that's going around the on and the car and interpret that information and then control the vehicle to do the driving task. And it's remarkable. You know, two years before we won the DARPA Urban Challenge, DARPA had a competition to drive across the desert. No one could do it. A year later, a few cars made it. And then we go to the urban setting, 10 times the number of lines of code required versus going across the desert. This is how fast this technology is moving. And this sets up a whole new market for the consumer electronics industry. Um, 
you're working hard on GPS, you're working hard on navigation systems, and uh, all of the wireless communications technology to make it possible. When you really take the technology on boss and marry it up with uh, really, really rich three-dimensional digital maps, and marry that up with um, the precision of GPS systems and the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication technology that GM's pioneered, uh, we see the ability to have autonomously driven vehicles um, right within our grasp. But I think the consumer electronics industry will be key, actually central, to making that future possible. Some pretty exciting possibilities there. I think Boss Kettering would be quite proud. So just to put this in perspective, autonomous driving means that someday you could do your email, eat breakfast, apply your makeup, read the newspaper, and watch a video, all while commuting to work. In other words, you can do all the things you do right now while commuting to work, except you can do it safely. It's still a ways off, but the technology demonstrated by Boss and V2V represents the latest example of electronics driving big advances in autos. Incidentally, we couldn't fit Boss into the room here with us today, but we did get him to Vegas, and you can see him tomorrow afternoon and Thursday in the Gold Lot at the Las Vegas Convention Center. So lots of work today with electronics, lots of work for tomorrow, and some big ideas even further out. Now let me turn to an issue of more immediate concern, especially with oil hitting $100 a barrel last week, and that's the role of the automobile in energy security and environmental protection, and the role that electronics and electricity can play in reinventing the automobile to address these concerns. As we look at the global energy and the environmental picture today, and consider the future of the automobile, one fact stands out above all others. The auto industry can no longer rely almost exclusively on oil to supply the world's future automotive energy requirements. This matter is getting plenty of attention here in the U.S., certainly recently, but make no mistake, this is a global issue. Energy supply, sustainable growth, CO2 emissions, fuel economy, these are topics of concern all around the world. I've learned firsthand in discussions with national and city leaders from Mumbai and Sao Paulo to Shanghai and Washington. For the global auto industry, it's critical both as a business necessity and an obligation to society that we develop alternative sources of propulsion to meet the world's demand for our products, a demand that's growing at a very rapid pace. Consider that 2007 was the sixth consecutive year of record sales for the global auto industry. Over 70 million units sold worldwide. In the next five years, we project that global sales will grow to 85 million units a year. And that 80% of this increase, 12 million new cars and trucks, will be in developing countries like China and India. This clearly shows the enormous opportunity our industry has, but also highlights how important it is that we address the challenge of sustainability. 